Well, for more on the breakdown in relations between Washington and Moscow and Moscow and the rest of the West, I spoke a short time ago with Evelyn Farkas. She formerly served as Deputy Assistant Secretary of State of, for Defense for Russia and Ukraine. Thank How you. do you account for it? Uh, we, we showed there the view from London. Mm -hmm. You could put this from Paris and you could put this from Washington as well. What's happening in relations between the West and Moscow? I mean, I think it's a standoff that it has taken us in the West, unfortunately, a while to understand. Starting already in 2008 when Vladimir Putin and the Russian government, Russian military invaded Georgia, we've had a situation where the Russians have been challenging the international order. Everything from big things like invading and occupying, as I mentioned, 20% of Georgia's territory, now of course Crimea and parts of Ukraine in the, in the east, to all the way down to challenging little rules about how you treat diplomatic, you know, people with diplomatic immunity in Moscow. So across the board, and of course Syria is the most egregious example because of the war crimes there. So across the board, in small ways and in very big ways, the Russians are challenging the international order and they're making Europeans actually less safe. Okay, let's add into that, of course, the latest political row here in the United States, and that's over charges that Russia has been ha effectively undermining the American democratic process. Um, we heard President Putin today accusing the Obama administration of whipping up hysteria over claims of hacking. Any well, credence I, to that? I think that the, the administration is pointing the finger in the right place. They were very the clear. American administration. The American administration, the, the intelligence officials, as well as the Department of Homeland Security, together came out with a statement unequivocally pointing to the Kremlin. So, you know, this is not a hysterical response. It's just, you know, very squarely placing the blame. Now, what the administration will do, we don't know. They've indicated that they're not going to actually do everything out in the public, so maybe they've already done something to retaliate. Um, I don't know what you what they've you can do. They said they're going to have a proportional response. What does that mean in this situation? Well, well what, strictly speaking, I guess it would mean to Russia's uh, Vladimir processes? Putin's, someone's emails, you know, in in Russia. I mean, I suppose they could do that. Um, I find it hard to imagine that we would do that exactly, but um, we tend to think, and the U.S. government um, tends to think in terms of lateral things that they can do, so it may not be a cyber move, it may be something else to show displeasure. Certainly sanctions have been hinted at. I mean, I personally believe that we ought to levy more sanctions on Russia or strengthen our sanctions on Russia because of what they're doing in Syria. What, what, but certainly that we need to have a cyber response as well. What do you think, in the terms of the U.S. election, President Putin is trying to actually achieve? I think, first of all, he wants a weakened United States, undoubtedly. He sees the United States as a threat. He sees NATO as a threat. He wants a weak region in Europe. And of course, our alliance, our military alliance, our economic and political relationship with Europe makes Europe stronger, makes us stronger. So he's, he will do anything to divide us from the Europeans militarily, economically, politically. He would like a United States leader who will basically acquiesce to his agenda. And, you know, basically Donald Trump has indicated that he's willing to do that. And I don't need to give you the whole litany of, you know, evidence, all the evidence and everything that he said. But, but effectively, don't, um, Vladimir, Donald Putin, Vladimir Putin, <laughs> well, when it comes <laughs> to Syria at least, has got that, hasn't he? He's got a weakened United States. I mean, the truth is the White House doesn't have much leverage in those negotiations. Well, we're only, we just, we haven't chosen Even to use... Even if John Kerry goes back to Geneva for the, whatever it is, umpteenth time. Yeah. We are, though, still the strongest military, economic, political power in the world. So the fact that we haven't chosen to use all of our leverage, all of our power is one thing, but certainly Vladimir Putin knows that we are the strongest military power. So I think that the administration, I would like the administration to come up with a more robust counter to what Russia is doing right now because we cannot have a diplomatic outcome without having real leverage at the negotiating table. Okay, Evan Farkas, thanks very much for coming in. Thank you, thank you for having me.